Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 5, Part 1 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance delivering more information about compensation itself and examining some of the emotions and feelings we may have about sin and personal truth. This session was recorded on the 17th of October 2017 from 2 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Well, we'd like to welcome everybody again. Myself and Mary are here. Hello, baby. How are you? Hi, darling. Yeah. We're going to be discussing again the topic of uh, the God's laws pertaining to forgiveness and repentance. And this one is session five that we're covering. So we're well into our sessions now. And by the way, it's looking, it's probably about <laughs> midway. <laughs> it's probably, there's probably another four or five sessions after this to cover before we get to answer the actual questions that triggered the entire discussion in the first place. So, so we'd like to try and encourage you to stick with us the entire time if you can. You will learn a lot about God's laws re regarding forgiveness and repentance if you do. The, the thing we'd like to talk more about today are uh, related more to the laws of compensation and how compensation affects forgiveness and repentance. We're going to sort of introduce some extra f features, if you like, of the <laughs> law of compensation. And on top of that, we're going to look at the feelings associated with the, with the law and the feelings associated with sin as well. And we're going to examine the compensatory relationship between compensation and forgiveness and repentance. Mm. And then on top of that, we'd like to, and um, we'll probably get to this tomorrow a bit, but we'd like to, to also discuss in this session the, um, the way in which many religious faiths on the planet have sort of incorporated some of the underlying principles of compensation in their tenets or laws, mm -hmm. but without really having a very strong understanding about the laws themselves or, or the way God's laws operate when it comes to compensation. So that's our general gist of things uh, to give you a brief introduction to our session today. And um, obviously, um, we, we would like to examine these things in detail. And, uh, and that means that Mary and I will be having quite a detailed conversation about each of these particular points. All right, be before we uh, go ahead with our conversation today, what we'd like to do is examine or do a bit of a review, and Mary and I will share this together. Uh -huh. We'll do a bit of a review of what we've covered up to thus far. In other words, we've covered four sessions so far. Yeah. And so what we'd like to do is just have a look, uh, just a brief review <laughs> about those four sessions. Because obviously by the time we get to session number 10, <laughs> the uh, review might not be that brief. So we need to keep, keep it nice and yeah. succinct. So and in session one, we focused on? We, we talked a lot about how we know God's truth about anything, because that was an introduction to us talking about um, God's truth and God's truth about forgiveness and repentance. Mm, yeah. So we, so that's uh, session one. Session two, we continued discussing God's truth about the forgiveness and repentance processes. And then we started to try to help people understand uh, how emotional these particular processes are and what they're going to feel like emotionally. Mm. So that was our focus on two. And we haven't really finished that yet. There's other things we're going to cover about emotions as we go along. <laughs> That's right. And it's really one and two was almost an introduction, wasn't it? Yes. And now we're giving some background information and then we're going to loop back around in our later sessions and talk more about forgiveness and repentance. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's right. But in session three, we talked about our personal responsibility to forgive and repent and the difference between accidental and intentional sin. We talked about accidental sin being a very, um, very, very rare occurrence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and that led us to talking about sincerity in forgiveness and repentance and sincerity in general. Yes, and obviously sincerity plays a large part in every process with regard to God's laws, not just this particular group of laws. Then, of course, the last session we had, we introduced the law of compensation into the discussion because we had to do that. The law of compensation has an effect on uh, the forgiveness and repentance processes, mm -hmm. and it also is there to correct the soul and provide rewards or compensatory rewards and compensatory pen penalties yeah. 
for actions done either that are in harmony with love for the rewards or out of harmony with love that are the penalties. Mm. And so we needed to sort of examine the significance of compensation, which we, which we did in the last session. Mm -hmm. So then we come to this session, <laughs> which is all, as I said, about discussing the sort of like, you could call them some additional effects of compensation. Yep. So we're just adding to the principles of conversation and we're focusing on the feelings associated with sin and mm. compensation. And then we're looking more at the role of compensation in forgiveness and repentance briefly, as well as the compensatory um, principles that are contained within different kinds of religious faiths. Yeah. So what we're going to do, the general format is going to be Mary's probably going to raise the topic for mm. us and uh, I will uh, hopefully address some of the issues she raises uh, succinctly. If not, Mary will look <laughs> after me and get honest. me to address those particular things and keep yep. me honest. <laughs> <laughs> and we should mention, if you haven't yet already seen those previous sessions, we do recommend that you watch them prior to this one because they provide context to what we're going to talk about today. So, so this, I uh, guess, again, is session five, and we would recommend you watch sessions one through to four before you watch this session. Otherwise, you're not going to gain a very good understanding of this session. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started with this particular session. Mm -hmm. Other effects of compensation. So, so far in our discussion about compensation, we've kind of established, haven't we, that the primary goal of compensation is to correct the effects of sin or and also primarily to correct the desire within individuals to sin, mm. as well as to reward loving desires within individuals. And and, and and to also encourage the development of loving desires within the soul. Yeah, that's very mm. important, isn't it? So mm. there's a lot of, it's not just corrective, it's also encouraging, mm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and providing the positive reward. I suppose you could say it, if you said it you know, bluntly, it's like the carrot and the stick, isn't it? <laughs> the conversation is really demonstrating those two particular things, the carrot or the reward yeah. uh, or the stick, the penalty or punishment associated for breaking the law. And the overall aim is that we move in the direction of love so that that donkey is moving in the yeah. direction of love. The yeah. carrots aim towards love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the penalties are there to try and tap you on the backside <laughs> to, to keep get you away. moving in yeah. that direction. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> so, so now... Um, in this section, what I'd like to raise with you um, is some effects of denying sin and how that actually increases our pain in the long term. Mm -hmm. um, the, this, we want to introduce this idea of a ripple effect. So everything that I do then has flow on effects and how that relates to compensation, mm -hmm. both in a positive sense and a negative sense. Mm -hmm. And then talk some more about how the desire to love is rewarded and how the desire to sin is penalised. Mm. And we'll probably also raise, won't be some examples there so that we can give people a clear understanding about every one of those topics. Yes. Yeah. 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 How denial of sin delays but increases pain and suffering. So how does the denial of sin delay but increase the pain and suffering caused by sin? Well, first we probably need to focus on how, how it sort of, how denial of sin acts upon us in, ter in terms of delay. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if I deny a sin, then I'm no longer aware that I am sinning. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where humans are adept at mm -hmm. this. <laughs> we're, we're all uh, very sneaky when it comes to denial of things. And, and in fact, frequently we're taught from a very, uh, very young age to deny that we did anything, <laughs> and particularly deny that we did anything wrong, because most of us found when we were very, very young that whenever we said, oh, yes, and we put up our hand and said, yes, I was honest, I, I did that, yeah. usually we got quite severely punished for that behaviour. And that causes us then to learn that, that honesty regarding what we've done yeah. is actually going to be punished. Mm -hmm. And so then after a while, we start believing that the best thing to do is deny that we did anything wrong. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. If given the chance, deny it <laughs> is our general rule of thumb. Yeah. And the problem with that is that after a while we become so um, embroiled in the denial that we don't even think that we even did anything wrong anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So we're even, we've gone from a state of um, denying it to ourselves, denying it to others to the point where we're now denying it to ourselves. So we even like deaden the awareness of our own sin to ourselves. Yes. Yes. And it's a, it's a terrible thing to do in the end because God, God's laws, the law of compensation in particular, is trying to unravel that, mm. to unravel our denial. Mm. And so all of the laws are actually governed to unravel our denial while we're putting more and more effort into denial. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, of course, that's going to have some very negative effects <laughs> if we continue that. Well, well, when we're denying it, we continue. So when we deny our sin, we're continuing to act in it, aren't we? Um, and then that means that we're continuing to reap the negative compensation to it. And some of us are even adept at denying that, aren't we? Exactly. And this yeah. is something that we raised in the, for, in the very first assistance group. We raised the whole concept of sin and we, we were talking, this is in 2016, yeah. and we were talking specifically about how most people want to even deny the relationship between pain and sin. Mm -hmm. And so this second point that we're raising about denial is all about the relationship between pain and sin. Yeah. We, we want to deny that our pain is caused by our sin. Mm -hmm. And so, so therefore, if it's not caused by sin, it must be caused by something else, <laughs> something that we don't know and we don't understand. Yeah. And, and for many of us, that means that we get the opportunity now of saying, oh, God made some system and we don't know who knows what's going on with it, you know, and, and my pain has got nothing to do with me. Yeah. It's got everything to do with this crappy system that God made, you know, and that's the way we sort of see it when we start denying the results of sin being pain. Yeah. So we're denying the compensatory effect of sin yes. by denying the pain that the sin caused. Mm -hmm. And then the, this causes to go, well, there must be another reason for the reason why, uh, for why I'm in pain. Mm. So you're saying that it almost seems to me that there's two scenarios. One, we realise we're in pain in our life, but we don't associate that with having a cause relating to our personal sin and our desire to sin. Correct. Or the second is we, we become so adept at using addictions that give us some this sort of little buzz of pleasure in the short term that we can somehow distance ourselves from the extreme level of pain that is building within us is that how yeah well you see it? obviously this is, i suppose the third point is that, that you've got this addiction that gives you the short-term pleasure sensation mm -hmm. it's a bit like a, a person who you know is an alcoholic it has the drink it gives him the initial short-term feeling of pleasure mm -hmm. but but not seeing but completely still remaining in denial of the, the long-term problems of alcoholism, yes. which include broken relationships, damaged children, broken friendships, uh, an inability to care for oneself, an inability yeah. to care for others, yeah. and so forth and so forth. You know, the, the list just keeps going on and on and on. And, yeah. and when it comes to emotional addictions, we do exactly the same thing as what a drunkard would do mm -hmm. with his alcoholism. We, we're basically saying, that as long as I get this short-term kick, this short-term pleasure and ignore all of the long-term consequences of pain, mm -hmm. then I can justify to myself getting this short-term pleasure. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is obviously a very illogical thing to do, mm. just like the alcoholic is being very illogical about continuing to drink, yeah. right? But, uh, but we continue to engage the process until such a time as we start measuring the long-term results mm. of our sin. Mm. So, so while we stay in denial, you can see there's a lot of very negative effects with regard to denial. Yes. Yeah. So maybe we can list a few um, broad things that happen. When we deny sin, we incre increase pain and suffering by simply by the fact that we continue to sow more and more sinful thoughts and emotions don't we we, yeah. we continue down the same path opposite way of you know the loving path and so we continue to to accrue more pain and suffering 
Yeah, so the best probably way to say that is that my desire to sin in a certain way now causes me to desensitise to that method of sinning, yes. which then makes me open to an even darker level of sinning mm. at some point in the future, mm. and therefore an even darker level of pain and suffering. And the more pain I get in that I also deny mm. means now that I'm now going to act in that pain and therefore cause more sin. Mm. And so it becomes like a snowball rolling down a hill, yeah. gathering momentum and speed and also mass. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a problem with much of our denial is that in the end, it gathers so much mass mm -hmm. that to undo it, it's like a runaway train yeah. and, and requiring, you know, and we're trying to stand in the front of it going, stop, stop, stop. And, and for most people, uh, when it comes to other people's runaway trains, when you stand in front of them and go, stop, 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 you just yeah, get completely flat. run over by it, right? But it's, I was just thinking about your analogy of the stone going down the hill gathering more momentum and how often people in physical addiction say you've got to hit rock bottom before you change. It's it's almost the same for it's a lot same. of us in denial with certain sin, isn't it? It's got to well, get it's the same bad. with all of our sin. Yeah. You've got to get to the stage where the pain usually is great enough for you to go, hang on a sec, I can now see the relationship mm. between pain and sin. Yeah. And I really need to stop the sin in order to mm. avoid this pain. Mm. Mm. But when we're in denial, we're not doing that. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. We're doing the completely opposite, actually. Yes. <laughs> And it's not just affecting ourselves, is it? The impact of our sin has an ever-increasing expanding circle the more that we deny it. And yep. because when we're denying it, we're acting in it, and we're acting in it again and again and again, and it's affecting more and more and more and more people. Yes, and we're not usually measuring that effect either because mm -hmm. we're not interested in measuring it. Yes. And the main reason why we're not interested is because we're quite selfish in that place. Mm -hmm. We're only interested in our own pleasure, our own satisfaction, and we're not really too concerned about how that pleasure or satisfaction affects other people. Mm. In other words, we, we have no sense of equality. We're not saying to other people, like, we're not saying that you and I deserve the same outcome of happiness. We're saying, I deserve all the happiness, and whether that makes you unhappy or not, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> That's really what we're saying. Yeah, mm. yeah. And so the sum total when we're in denial is that there's more, we're acting in the sin more and more, affecting more and more people, and so there's going to be more and more compensatory pain. Yes. And that's how it relates to increased pain and suffering. That's right. So the question was how denial of sin delays but increases pain and suffering. <laughs> it delays it in the sense that it, it gives the appearance of uh -huh. something not happening yeah. because we've detuned from, or from being emotionally sensitive to it happening, mm -hmm. but it actually is increasing yeah. our pain and suffering yeah. the more and more we deny. Mm -hmm. It's increasing our pain and suffering, not only now, but it's also increasing our pain and suffering of recovery. It's sort of like a person who hits rock bottom before they change yeah. has a longer distance to recover Yes. than a person who hits halfway and then decides to change. Mm. So, so obviously the sooner we decide to become aware, yes. no longer deny, the better our pain and suffering levels are going to be. Mm. They'll be lower. But the longer we deny, obviously we'll get to a point where the pain and suffering is quite intense and mm. immense, and also it's going to be much more difficult to recover from that point. Mm. That's very interesting. So if we talk about it as like when I'm in denial, I start this kind of a decline. If I wait to reach the rock bottom, um, then as you say, there's far more, if you think about it visually, there's far more to recover to the point of a, no pain or happiness or whatever. Yes. Whereas if we stop halfway, then there's less to recover but it requires more um, sensitivity to pain, which we've talked about in previous sessions. Exactly. Now, if we compare that, you give an example of a physical addiction looking that way with the act of drunkenness, shall we say. Yeah. You know, we might get drunk once or twice a week or whatever, right? Or even once a week or something might get drunk. So you can say right at the beginning, you decide to not drink at all. So at some point in your life, you weren't drinking, mm -hmm. probably in your young teenage years for many people. Mm -hmm. And then they had their first drink and then they like the effect it has and, and the effect it has in nullifying some of the emotions they feel and so mm -hmm. forth. So they decide to do it more and decide to do it more and decide to do it more. Eventually, they can't. then it becomes like I can't live without it any day. Yes. 
and then it gets comes to like I can't live without it any minute of the day. Mm-hmm. And then it gets to the stage where now I'm pretty much non compass mentors most of the time. Most of the time, and I and I really don't even know what I'm doing. I my do a whole relationships. My, my work relationships situation. get destroyed. Yep. And all the other things get destroyed. And then when I get right at the end of it, I might may have some awareness, right? Yeah. Now you can see on that slope that at any time I had the choice to stop. Yes. Now, obviously, if I stop right at the top when I'm just getting drunk well, once a week or once a month. Right? And I see, gosh, and I this see, seems uh, to be creating problems for me and for other people. I think I'm going to deal with I'll this. I think I'll tame this down, right? Yeah. And now it's very easy to recover from that position. Mm-hmm. But if after you've lost your family, your friends, your life, your work, your, you know, pretty mm-hmm. much everything you've ever had, it's a lot harder now to recover that original position yes. than it was if you just had stopped earlier. Mm. And even and the compensatory pain for everyone around me mm-hmm. and myself is much greater at the bottom of that slope. So even if I do the work to physically recover my life to an area where it seems like I'm not drinking and I've got a stable job and I might even start another relationship, it doesn't necessarily... Um, I mean, I'm fully recovered, does it? No, because the past compensatory pain that you've and suffering you've created not only for yourself and for others, unless you deal with the actual cause. Yes. Obviously, there's still the potential that you may do it again. Yeah. And also, there's the uh, the addressing of the emotions associated with the fact that you did cause pain and suffering to other people's lives. Mm. That needs to be addressed and will mm. have to be addressed, and God will God's laws will demand <laughs> is addressed. Yes. So while you will get rewarded for your now enlightened behaviour yes. of no longer going down that slippery slope, um, you will still have to pay for the past behaviour. Mm. And that, that makes sense, of course. It does. God's compens- laws of conversation do not allow us to get away with anything. Yeah. God's laws of conversation do not even allow us to get away with denial. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and that... Um, denial if i go back to your example of the drinking the taking if if i'm getting drunk once a week or once a month and i keep wanting to deny the 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 effects the effects often i'll take another drink and drink more and Mm -hmm. and then i feel uncomfortable and at my work and then i drink some more and i drink some more so this is what you're saying as well about the delay the denial the relationship between denial and delay of pain and suffering i'm still accruing more pain and suffering but i'm desensitizing to it exactly so it feels like i'm delaying the pain yes um but but you're really just desensitizing to it yeah that's really all you're doing yeah yeah so it's a, it's a very de- denial is a very damaging thing so you know every time you decide to deny an emotional addiction it's the very same effect as if you decided to deny a physical addiction Every time you decide to deny a sin, it's exactly the same effect as every time you decide to deny a physical addiction. It's exactly the same principle. Mm-hmm. You're going to find yourself going down, becoming more and more desensitized to the problem, mm-hmm. but also the problem getting worse. Mm. And unless you come face to face with that and, mm. and solve that dilemma, mm-hmm. you will continually degrade your condition. Mm. Now, the law of conversation is trying to get you to correct that Mm-hmm. by helping you see the relationship between the pain and suffering and the underlying desire or to either deny or to engage sin. Mm. And when you said just prior denying the physical addiction, you mean denying the existence of the physical addiction? Yeah, most people who drink too much will not admit they drink too much, mm. for example. Mm. Most people will not for a long period of time. Mm. And then even after they become closet drinkers, they still won't admit it. Yeah. You know, and even after they become drunk a lot of the day, yeah. they still won't admit it. You know, yeah. usually it gets to a point, they've got to get to a point where their whole life almost is destroyed before they begin to admit things. And even then, many of them don't. Yeah. That's because of the level of denial. Yeah. You know, a person who has a ver- is very sensitive to denial doesn't allow things to get that degraded before mm-hmm. they begin to correct their behaviour. Mm-hmm. 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 And, th- and this is caused by this denial even of the lack of re- or the relationship between pain and suffering yeah. and, and sin and pain and suffering. Yeah. You know, most people want to deny there is a relationship, mm-hmm. but the big problem of denying the relationship is it allows the sinful and 
behavior to continue, mm -hmm. thereby allowing greater pain and suffering, causing greater mm -hmm. pain and suffering in our future. Yeah. And, you know, obviously denial is a very important emotion that we need to get out of mm. if we're ever going to really connect with the law of compensation. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. Excellent. Compensation and the ripple effect of what we sow. How do past thoughts, words, actions and emotions continue to have effects well after the originating behaviour? Mm. Well, first, the first thing we need to remember about, I suppose you could say about compensation is, and the principle of reaping what we sow, mm -hmm. is that everything is based firstly upon our intention or desire. So, so we need to remember that. So we're talking here about intentions and desires. These intentions and desires cause thoughts, they mm. cause other feelings, and they cause actions and behaviour. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that in the intentions and desires are what the compensation law is trying to correct, but it's also what governs our future decision-making process in terms of our behaviour, what we're going to do in the future. So mm. that's, that's number one. Mm -hmm. so, so we need to, once we've recognised that, we can start seeing, right, that the intention or the desire to do something mm -hmm. eventually results in us doing that thing. Mm -hmm. And in doing that thing, that whatever we have done will have an effect not only on ourselves, but potentially on the lives of others. In other words, they may then do things mm -hmm. based on what we did. Yes. And that's what we're calling the ripple effect, if you like. Uh, well, how does the ripple effect have, a, have, a, a, have you know, involvement in the conversation? So we're saying, basically, that if I have an intentional desire mm -hmm. and I act upon it, now whether that intentional desire is loving or unloving, yes. uh, I'm saying either one either could way. be, yep. can be either way, because remember, if it's loving, we'll be compensated, richly rewarded, yes. and if it's unloving, we'll be penalised. So, so the compensatory ideas or concepts work in the same direction so here i am i've got my intentional desire as soon as i give birth to it yes it, there's a lovely scripture in the bible that talks about giving birth to sin uh -huh. and it's intention and desire that helps us give birth to a sin yeah as soon as i give birth to my action now here we're talking about loving or unloving mm -hmm. actions yeah not just sin or unloving actions mm -hmm. but both types of actions as soon as i give birth to it now it's going to have an effect on other people, on the environment, on society, yep. on my future life, the future lives of others, the future society. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect everything in the future mm -hmm. based on what I felt and then acted upon yep. right now. Yes. Yep. So that's, that's the real thing we need to remember. Now, of course, it affects everything in the future in certain ways. Uh -huh. right. Yeah. And, and this idea of um, compensation and the ripple effect is that given that there is a ripple effect to everything, either loving or unloving that we do, loving or sinful that we do think or want uh, and act upon, then compensation is attributed according to those ripple effects be they, so we'll have positive compensation if our intention was to create loving um, situations and uh, actions and so on, mm -hmm. in not only ourselves and others. Mm -hmm. And then if our intention was to sin and or encourage sin in others and it creates more sin, then... Well, let's, let's call it, be a bit more sort of general about it. Mm -hmm. If our intention is to create a harmful outcome... Yes. I think yes. we need to probably say those words because it because uh, we don't realise that a lot of times we have quite harmful intentions if, and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, selfishly motivated intentions, mm -hmm. intentions uh, where we want to be ignorant or insincerely motivated or we want to live in our facade or mm -hmm. we want to have an addiction met. Uh, most of these are very selfish and they all have harmful outcomes. Yes. So in the case of that, then that's going to have a ripple effect if I intended those particular things to occur uh -huh. and therefore there will be compensation associated with the intention. Yeah. So remember, it's the moment I have the intention. Uh -huh. From that moment onwards, the law of compensation is working upon me. Uh -huh. If my intention was loving, 
from the moment I had the intention, the law of compensation is going to start rewarding me. Yes. And from the, if my intention was unloving, the moment I had that intention, mm -hmm. the com law of compensation is going to start penalising me. Mm. And talking here about, um, about the ripple effect and how that relates to that, we're also saying, aren't we, that the law of compensation measures those outcomes and effects and apply that that can or will or will happen in the future if nobody else uses their will in a in an opposing way and even the and even potentially what might have happened even if everybody was good yes so in other words you could be one bad person in a really good society yeah. you could decide to do a bad thing with a specific attention no one in society listens to you and they all do the right thing yes yeah you will still be compensated as if you had the intention that everybody turned bad. Because <laughs> that was your intention. Because that was your intention. So, and for the ways that those people turning bad might have affected other people and those people turning bad might have affected other people. Yes. So it seems to me there's two points you want to make here. One is that we are compensated for all of the ripple effects based on what our intention was. Yes. Um, but Positive and negative. Positive and negative. And um, sometimes, yeah, so positive and negative. And the second one, though, that we possibly haven't covered is that that compensation is applied immediately to the soul, even though some of those things would happen in the future. It's as if they've happened in the future and it's immediately upon your soul. Yes. Yeah. And the reason for that is quite obvious in that God's laws can see that your intention was to create those things. Mm -hmm. And God's laws measure, as we talked about right at the beginning, when we talked about how the truth about how these things work, yes. they measure the flow of energy in the soul. So mm -hmm. they can measure, mathematically measure your intention. Yeah. So if your intention was to damage everybody, yes. then, then that was measured at that moment in time, the instant you have that intention. And, and that intention is going to be compensated immediately mm -hmm. as, if, as if you had injured those people, even if you haven't yet taken the action yes yeah. yeah and of course if you take the action there's even further compensation yes. for taking the action yes <laughs> and even if i take the action so we spoke this morning you and i in private about a parent with their child who has an intention for the child um, that is not loving mm -hmm. uh, for their future direction in their life um, the child takes on that intention begins to act in it and then through their own loving intention changes that to mm -hmm. become more loving. The parent at the time they created that intention within the child is compensated at the time they created the intention of the child as if the child never changed their will in a loving direction. Correct. Because that's what the parent's intention was. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you can see it's quite a serious process it is. In, the, in the ripple effect is quite a serious effect. Mm -hmm. If you examine it, like God's laws are basically saying this, that if you have an intention of a certain type, that means you're creating through that intention, you're creating the conditions under which the potentiality of these actions are now uh, possible. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Without you doing something or thinking it or wanting it and acting on it, it wouldn't have ever happened. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So you are now creating the potential of a number of things now being possible that weren't before possible. Mm. And as a result, you should be penalised for the fact that you're creating that, that, if you like, that framework. Yes. Without yet even having done the actions. Mm -hmm. you, you have created the framework for these potentials to exist mm. and therefore you should be penalised for that. By the way, you should also be rewarded for having created the framework for a number of positive potentials existing, yeah. even though they don't yet exist. Yes. You will be rewarded for that. Yeah. So God is just with regard. He's not just going to say, let's penalise everything that your <laughs> intention was for that didn't happen, but let's not reward you for what your intention was for. It's not like that. He's yeah. going to reward you, or the laws are going to reward you or punish you depending on the intention, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it happens immediately as soon as you had the intention. Mm. 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 Okay, mm. all right. And then, obviously, if I in change my intention in the future, then that new intention is compensated in exactly the same way as the old intention was. 
have I oversimplified that? Uh, yes. So, so let's say, let's say, let's let's first say a few other things. Yeah. Um, I think it's imp important that we first say, like we've, we've what, written what in the, the different it, and then you in the special it. conditions. Yes. Yeah, let me let me <laughs> because, read that. Because yeah. each one of these particular conditions have a specific um, application to the next condition. So yes. we need to understand them yes. so that we can understand what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically we're saying that um, the ripple effect is attributed to a person at the time they demonstrate the intention. Number one. Even though the ripples happen or occur over time, the compensations for the soul-based condition which created the framework, as you called it, or the conditions that determine the future ripples are immediately imposed upon the soul. So, so this is very important. We've already talked about this a bit. So we, we're basically saying that if I right now have the intention that something will occur, that intention has created a potential of those particular things incurring. Mm -hmm. So my soul will be either rewarded or penalised right at this moment for my creating the potential of those things. Yes. Yes. Okay. Number two or mm -hmm. three, we're up to probably. The compensations imposed upon the soul occur no matter how other people may use their will in the future either positively in harmony with love or negatively out of harmony with love. Yes, so perhaps we can give an example of that. If I decide to tell the truth to someone and my intention is that, that I help them mm -hmm. by telling them the truth and they decide that they didn't want to hear the truth and they get all upset and angry and all bitter and twisted about it, yep. I will be positively rewarded as if they had responded positively to my truth. Yeah. Yes. Of course, the same applies on the, on the reverse. reverse. Got you. Mm. Got you. The compensation is added at the time the intentions were manifest, so at the time they exist, mm -hmm. and the compensation takes into account all of the future possible ripples in that same moment that the intention is manifest. Yes, so yeah. God's laws basically measure that this particular emotion within you, this particular desire or intention within you, that obviously creates emotions has the potential of creating all of these different things and it measures what it has the potential of creating yeah and it assumes that those things have been created even if they have not yet mm -hmm. been created mm -hmm. right? it assumes that that was your intention to create those things yeah so that's what we've got to work upon your soul's intention yes mm. yes and also it's loving that it doesn't take into account the other ways that other people might use their will. No. It just acts upon our individual soul. That's right. Yeah. So, so you might tell the truth with the intention to cause harm. Mm. Well, that's going to be penalised. Mm. Even if the person who receives the truth takes that on and says, oh, thank oh you. I'm going to look at that <laughs> and I'll deal with that in a positive way and changes the direction of their life into a totally positive direction. Mm -hmm you are still penalised as if you were trying to make them feel worse about themselves and lead them in a negative direction in their life. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, so there's an example of how the, you know, the conversation is added at the time the intentions were manifest. Mm. The times that the tensions were measurable yes. are the times for, from now on the conversation exists. It exists. And that's what you often say with, to me, um, you're already living with the compensation of your condition right, right now because often I get concerned about the, Some future, the time. future time <laughs> and how this is going to get worse over time and you're saying, well, no, no you're it, living it, with it right now. It can't get worse over time. Your compensation can't get worse. Unless I you're, keep sinning. Unless you keep sinning further and <laughs> yeah. therefore more compensatory effect to the curve. Yeah. You, like your compensation for what you've done in the past can't get worse after you've done it. No. <laughs> As soon as you've done it, that's when it's the worst. Yes. And, and, and if you do it again, obviously that's worse again. But, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously you can stop doing that and say, okay, I can improve my condition now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the final point we had there was if I change my intention in the future, that new intention is compensated at the time that the new intention is manifest. Yes. 
the new compensation is yes. at the time the new intention is manifest. So what are we saying there? We're really saying that, right, forget about all of your past intentions because <laughs> cause they're unchangeable. Yeah. You know, you can't do anything about them now. And you're living with the compensation. And you're already pain, you? living in the consequences yeah. of them right now. Yeah. Like all you can really do is change and have and manifest a new intention. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, you'll have compensation rewards or penalties, depending on what kind of intention that was. Yes, yes. And, and so it's very important to, like, what I see a lot of people doing when it comes to compensation is they're so worried about everything they've done in the past. And you do need to be concerned enough to analyse it and stop the behaviour, obviously. Mm -hmm. But but saying to yourself, oh, now going through this uh, terrible self-punishing and all the other things that you'd have a tendency to do when you look at the past, is all pointless mm -hmm. because none of that changes what you try to do from now on. Yeah. None of it changes your desire from now on. Mm -hmm. you, you need to change your desire from now on. Yes. That's the secret. Yeah. And, and if you can change your desire from now on, then you can do a great deal to mitigate the past in the sense of be repent for or forgive Mm. others for the past mm. and you can do a great deal there if you change your intention and this is where we'll see later on the relationship between conversation and forgiveness repentance is that it obviously we can engage some higher laws remember the law of conversation is a lower law than the laws of forgiveness and repentance mm -hmm. we can we can choose to engage some higher laws and therefore help us in the process of working through these compensatory effective past behavior so so what's the point of worrying about it now? We've done it. We've already mm. we've already done the deed. And mm -hmm. um, it's sort of, sort of like you know I quite often see it with persons who who, who eat too much. You know, yeah. they have they eat too much and they go, oh, I've eaten too much. You know, yeah. um, and and it doesn't stop them from eating too much next time. No, right until they actually say, no, there was a compensatory effect of eating too much. It feels really bad. And I'm yeah. starting to get fat and all these other things. Yeah. And then they then they start correcting the fact that they eat too much and stop their action. Yes. And now they have the chance to be rewarded for their new, <laughs> their new, action. new action, their new desire. While they worry that they've eaten too much, but never do anything about it, mm -hmm. there's no change. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's a good analogy then to ask a clarifier that I have, which is, Say we've spoken here about the time of my, say it's an unloving intention, uh, then the compensation is attributed to me, bang, immediately, for all future ripples and everything. Yep. Um, and then I change my intention to be loving and I begin to act on that. Then when I get some great positive compensatory rewards mm -hmm. and I actually feel better, but it doesn't mean that all of the compensation from my last unloving intention has left me, does it? Of course not. So the fat person <laughs> in your previous example isn't magically thin overnight. No. But they do start to reap some benefits immediately. immediately yep. And but they still have pain, don't they? They're still going to have pain until yep. the full consequence of all of their previous behaviour is paid for. Yeah. You know, obviously that is a necessary fact. Otherwise, you would do everything with impunity. Yes. Uh, if if all you had to do is go, oh, I'm changing my mind now, and all of a sudden everything's different. And imagine if you're you're quite large, let's say, and you've eaten, you know, houses of food yeah. <laughs> over your life, and you're quite large, and all you had to do is go, oh, I'm just going to be thin now, and all of a sudden you were thin. Yeah. You would not, you know, worry about the consequence of eating all that. To that yeah. food and yeah you, you, you would you you, you wouldn't mm. care about it no. you could say well i can be thin immediately if i mm -hmm. want to be thin mm -hmm. so what's the point of worrying about all that or what's mm -hmm. the point of seeing the consequences of my behavior yeah and this is the thing is that most people on earth want god or want the law to actually allow for immediate change yes but if immediate change was allowed for then we wouldn't contemplate the sinful behavior in the first place mm -hmm. we, we, it would actually encourage yeah. the sinful behavior yes. the fact that change takes time yeah and and you go through a process will give you a feeling that ah oh, do i want to do that again do i want to go through that whole recovery process again 
no, I don't. It's, and this is what can help people a lot. You, you know, it do, does help alcoholics, for example, mm. with a physical addiction, and it helps everybody with any f- uh, emotional addiction. You imagine if you're an alcoholic and you had a terrible, destructive, self-destructive life until you got to the point where you hit rock bottom and everything was bad and you decide you're not going to touch another drink again, mm-hmm. right? Now, when you go to touch another drink, you'd be going, hang on a sec. Mm. Like, last time I did this, mm. look where it put me. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe touching the drink's not a good idea. Mm. Even better than that would be a dealing with the addiction that causes me to touch a drink. Yeah, uh, That would be even better. But you can see that the past compensatory effects of my past behaviour mm. now have an impact upon me and help me decide that maybe the future behaviour, I'd be wiser to engage a different type of future behaviour. Mm. Mm. And does that also relate to, because you were talking about how it's slow, it's not immediately wiped clean. Does that also relate to the fact that the alcoholic's life is a mess so just when they start their recovery and stop drinking, they're still in a mess in the externals of Which them. Which they are slowly recovering yes. from. But they, if it was instant, then there's nothing to stop you from getting into a mess again. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. so you know, it, it, nothing, nothing that changes can be instant. Mm. Because if it was, it would, uh, it would actually encourage us to sin further. Yeah. And, and if it actually happened that way, the world would be in an even worse condition than we have right now. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Mm. Compensation and the ripple effect rewards past loving behaviour. Mm. So how do past loving thoughts, words, actions and emotions continue to be rewarded by compensation? Well, again, we've got to look back at what we said in, about the ripple effect. So mm-hmm. what we need to do is refer back to a previous point that we had mm-hmm. with regard to the ripple effect. And remember, the ripple effect is that if we begin the ripple effect, the compensation will act upon whatever would have potentially occurred, mm-hmm. not, not, not actually occurred, but what would have, would have, have potentially occurred if we had that particular intention. Mm -hmm. So there's the ripple effect in action. So when it comes to past loving behaviour, of course it makes sense that as soon as I have an intention to engage some loving behaviour, loving desires, Mm -hmm. I am now, the soul is going to be immediately rewarded. Mm -hmm. And also there might be positive ripple effect rewards rewards as well. That will be immediately applied. That will be immediately applied for my loving behaviour. Yes. Whether that loving behaviour is is like whether those rewards are immediate or sometimes they are even long term. Mm. They will continue, continue, continue on for long periods of time. Mm. I'll just read from our notes because I'd like to clarify a couple of things with you. So if the person who began the ripple effect was motivated sincerely by love, Mm -hmm. then one is that all immediate and long-term good results of that motive, that, that motivation. So the things that good things that happen right now, as well as what is potentially going to happen in the future, whether those effects are att- intended or not mm-hmm. are attributed to the person who originated the action. Mm, this is where God's very generous. Yeah, very generous. <laughs> so if I think, look, I'm going to plant a tree in my backyard and I go out and I do it, dig the hole, put the plant in, and I say, I'd really like to create um, so- somewhere for the birds to nest and, and shelter. And that's my intention. But... So I'm immediately um, receive compensation for that in your soul. In my soul, but you're also saying that if God can see more benefits mm-hmm. than I see, mm-hmm. and that I haven't even intended those benefits, and that you didn't even know about, that I didn't even know about, and I didn't even think of, and I didn't even care about, really, if they do happen, I get rewarded. Mm. Mm. immediately so, yeah, yeah so one of those things might have been you weren't intending but it happens to be that the 
the world's oxygen levels have now improved, yeah. you know, or yeah. the world's, you know, purity yeah. of air is now improved. Yeah. You didn't intend that, but God measured that. Yeah. The law measured that. Yeah. And gave you the positive compensation for that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Lovely, eh? Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you realise that um, in a lot of ways, you know, we, we, we often focus a lot on the negative, mm. but here we're talking about the loving you know, the loving actions and what rewards they bring. Yeah. And the loving actions and rewards they bring are far more in, intense, in fact, than the negatives mm. because because of this little factor, yeah. which is actually quite a large one. And the, this factor is, ah, I'm going to get rewarded even for the things I didn't realise that were going to happen if I had my positive yeah. intentions yeah. Yeah. engaged. And this is where I was thinking about our last assistance group in 2016 about mm -hmm. God's loving laws, mm -hmm. how if we do uh, create things or do things in harmony with the principles that we outlined at that group, then we it's almost like we can be assured that there's going to be um, positive effects that we can't even imagine that we're going to be compensated for just because we're living and creating in harmony with a certain set of principles mm. that um and even most of us will be doing it with opposition externally mm. so that's even a greater mm -hmm. reward actually mm. Mm. interesting it's a lot harder to do it when you have opposition than it is if you don't yeah so you know god measures that intention too yeah and rewards that as well yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> A lot of good rewards for you, honey. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I've already and, had many of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were applied immediately, weren't they? <laughs> okay. Uh, the second point then is that if the person who began the ripple effect was motivated sincerely by love, then any negative effects of the ripple, uh, if they weren't intended mm -hmm. by me, mm -hmm but are actually happening due to people acting out of harmony with love, mm -hmm. that their actions were triggered by my original loving action, but it wasn't my intention that they, that they would trigger them in that way, mm -hmm. then that's not attributed to me. Not at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the beauty of this is that you can do things like tell the truth or be loving in your intentions, and it triggers a chain of events caused by the poor condition of other people around you, which are negative, um, and that can certainly occur, mm -hmm. certainly occur. For example, just stating the truth about one thing can trigger a whole chain of events yeah. that often ends up in a terrible state on the planet. Uh, but if all of that, those events occur, none of them will be attributed to you if you had the right intention. Yeah. Mm. yeah. They'll only be attributed to the people who undertook those actions. Mm. 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 So we're going to discuss examples of this later. So at this stage, we want to just present the basic facts about what if I have a loving behaviour in the past, yeah. what happens? You know, or even my intention right now to have loving behaviour for my future, what happens? Yes. And, and we need to see that what happens is very rewarding. It, it has a, God is very generous mm -hmm. about this because it means that we, we are completely safe from any penalizing effect yeah because where our intention was right and on top of that we'll be rewarded for things even if we didn't know those things could be the rewards yeah we'll yeah. be rewarded for them and and this demonstrates god's generosity definitely mm. yeah yeah right. <laughs> compensation and the ripple effect for past sin so how do past unloving thoughts, words, actions and emotions continue to be penalised by compensation? Right, so again, we need to remember that compensation is, a, the ripple effect regarding compensation is that we will be compensated for what we chose to do in the past and, and also what effects that had mm -hmm. on other people. Mm -hmm. And it's not only, again, what we chose to do, but rather it's our intention. So. Remember, the person who began the ripple effect is compensated for the results of that ripple effect, is yeah. basically what we're saying. Yeah. Now, 
if the person who began the ripple effect began it based on a harmful intention, they, mm -hmm. they wanted to hurt somebody, they wanted to feed an addiction, they wanted to, afraid. you know, they were angry, afraid, resentful, they uh, maybe acted in hatred or resentment towards another. Or even acted to just stay ignorant to something. Yes, they chose ignorance yep. or they wanted to, uh, you know, act upon any other emotion that God's laws judge as unloving. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's now going to be a whole series of ripples from that. Yeah. You know, and it's not only what they chose to do in that moment, yeah. but there's also a whole heap of compensatory effects. And what we need to do is look at what happens with the compensatory effects. So perhaps the best thing to do again is to read the three points and yeah. then we'll just discuss them one by one. Mm. Okay. So if, if I'm a person who began who who is motivated in seal, insincerely, sinfully, um, into action or even just had that intention, um, then an immediate negative result of the ripple effect that could have been foreseen. So this is all immediate, not just one, all immediate results. Yes. Not just one, like where you said and initially, and I was just saying, no, we need to say the word all because yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. lot of potential yeah. results. <laughs> yes, but they're the immediate, so I'm acting in my sin and what will happen immediately yep. um, that, could, that I could have foreseen or that I intended mm -hmm. are attributed to me. Mm -hmm. So that's... Um, Whether it actually happened or not. Yes. Is the important thing here too. So let's say um, I decided that I would uh, tell you a lie because I wanted you to do something for me mm -hmm. and that particular thing that I wanted you to do eventually caused you to do a number of different things um, based upon my lie. Let's say that happened. Right? I'm yeah. just giving an example of yep. this first point. Remember this is the immediate result. That's right. Not the, yep. the long-term. So, so my, the immediate results are I told the lie. Yep. It affected how I viewed you and affected how everyone else in the room viewed you and me, maybe. Well, maybe not. See, the, initially the lie might have been to make myself look good mm -hmm. and you didn't even know I lied. Yep. Right? So I'm making myself look good. But the immediate, there's a number of immediate uh, results upon my soul. Yeah. I tried to make myself look good. I tried to falsify myself. I tried to present a facade of myself. I've tried, all in that moment, that's what I did. Yeah. I tried to lie about who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also lying about what my true intentions or desires are and so forth, just by saying that one thing. Just by saying, and, and I might have, if your intention was to feel better than me in that moment. You might have felt I bad. I might have felt bad. About yourself. Inferior to you. Yeah. And so that was attributed to And me. then I might have felt superior to you as yeah. a result of you feeling inferior. That's yeah. all attributed to me yeah. right in that instant. Yeah. So Boom. they're the immediate negative effects. Yeah. And they're all attributed to you because... But that was because you could foresee that they would happen and you intended that they happen. Correct. Yep. So it's not an unforeseen negative thing. No. Yep. No. No. Okay. So if I intended to put you down through lying mm -hmm. or I intended to make myself look good through lying mm -hmm. or whatever it is that or I even, intended. Even if you could see the possibility that I would feel worse than you by you, by you lying. Yes, and yep. if, if it was a potential that I could see the possibility given my intellect. Yep. <laughs> so, so powerful intellect. Yeah. Given given my intellect, if I if I'm clever enough to see that there would have been that possibility. Yeah. Then it's a, it's a, it's as if it happened, even if it did not. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Okay. In addition to that. Mm hmm. All of the long-term negative effects. Again, can I emphasize? All of them. Yes, so every single one of them. <laughs> um, of the ripple that could have been foreseen mm -hmm. or were intended mm -hmm. are attributed to the person who originated the action. Yes. So this is the long-term effects of then... Uh, so let's say in putting you down, you then went home and shot yourself. Yep. Yep. And you, you either had to intend that or foresee that that could happen. Oh, I, all I needed to see was foresee that that might be a possibility. Yes. Yep. 
And it will be attributed to you. If I had the wrong intention, yeah. it will be attributed to me. Yeah. As if it happened. Yeah. Even if you went home, put a gun in your mouth and decided not to kill yourself. It would be to me as if you had decided to kill yourself. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Because I intended mm. or could foresee the possibility of mm. that happening mm. yeah. through my action. And of course, it depends on whether you can see the possibility or not. Most of the times, a lot of the times, we can't see the possibilities. Yes. And a lot of some of the times, we don't intend the possibilities because, you know, we're pretty selfish most of the time. We're yeah. only thinking about the possibilities for ourselves in the short term. Yeah. yeah. But um, for things like bullying and and online bullying, there there's, there's some... really dark intentions there. Trolls, for example, on the internet, very yeah. dark intentions. Yeah. They, they are penalised at the soul level for everything they intended to occur, even though it may not have occurred. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you imagine their dark, it's a very dark condition if you're a troll on the yeah. internet, to be yeah. frank. Yeah, um, yeah there's, there's many examples like that where people intend, you know, like a minister gets up and intends all of his flock, you know, whether it might be an Islamic flock or a Christian flock, to go and kill the infidel. Yeah. You know? He, he hasn't, he, he says he hasn't committed the act, mm. but his intention is that everybody around yes. him does. Yeah. It's like he intended every act. Yes. So he's compensated for all of the subsequent deaths. Yeah. Imagine the mm. condition. Imagine the condition of these people. Mm. Very, very dark condition. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. So the immediate negative results are attributed. Mm -hmm. The long-term long ones. ones are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... All the long-term negative effects of the ripple due to people acting out of harmony with love triggered by the original unloving action mm -hmm. are partially attributed to the originating action if those results could, oh, I see, are, are partially, are still partially attributed yes. if the results could not have been seen or intended by the person. Yes. So, so you're saying there that when when you can totally foresee them and you intend them to happen, it's as if they totally happened. And you will be fully compensated for that. In a negative sense. Well, positive, but in this case, it's we're talking negative. negative. Yep. If it happened, uh, it was negative as a result of your ne unloving action, but you had no idea that that was a potentiality. You couldn't foresee it and you didn't intend it, but it still happened. Mm. You are still, you're not fully negatively compensated but you are still partially compensated. Yes, and if I can give an example of that. Yeah. And um, this is the emotion of guilt at play. So so for example, if you did something unloving, mm -hmm. not intending a certain result, but that result actually occurred and then you saw it, you'd probably feel bad about it. Yeah. That feeling of feeling bad about it is one of the negative consequences. So if you didn't intend it, you, you mean, and then it happened. Yeah, no, if so you, intended, you, said it intended. you intended to take an action, but you didn't intend that particular result. Yes. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So you intended to take the action, you wanted to take the action, you decided yeah. to take the action, <laughs> but you didn't predict that, result. that particular result. Yeah. But that result happens. Yes. You will feel guilty about the result. Yeah. And that is a part of the compensatory effect of you taking that original action. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So this is an example of a partial, mm -hmm. if you like, a partial ripple mm. effect occurring. Mm -hmm. And example of that, I decide to keep a gun in my house. Yeah. The intention is not good. You know, it's probably to defend myself against intruders or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then let's say I feel there's an intruder in the house, I go out and shoot the person. Yeah. And it happens to be my son. Yeah. So you feel devastated. You feel devastated. And the devastation is linked to the original event of you deciding to keep a gun. Yeah. And as a result of that, the partial effect will be that you feel a tremendous amount of guilt about having killed your own son mm. with the gun that you decided to keep to kill other people. Yeah. Then you may contemplate, was it wise to have a gun to kill other people in the first place? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an example of a partial effect. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, we're often more sensitive in the in the um, immediacy of 
the compensation being applied. Often we're more sensitive to the unintended negative results than we are to the negative to the fully intended negative results. Unfortunately, yes, yeah. but that makes sense too if you think it about does. it. The ones that were intended were already born from a soul condition that was flawed. Yeah. Or from a soul condition that was pure, one yeah. of the two, if it's yeah. loving or unloving. Here we're talking about unloving. Yeah. So already born from a soul condition that was flawed. Yeah. Whereas the unintended result was not born from any flawed soul condition. Yeah. And so naturally you're more sensitive to the unintended result mm -hmm. than you are to the intended result. Yeah, uh, definitely. There's a fourth thing we need to mention here too, and that is what happens if somebody decides to do a good thing, even though we did a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And under those circumstances, none of what they did is, a, is, is attributed. ever attributed to us. <laughs> yes. So in other words, you can't then say, oh, but I did a bad thing to you, but look what you did as a result of it. Like, and I've seen parents do this with children mm -hmm. a lot where they say, yeah, I, I was a really bad parent to you, but look what your life is now. It's all because of me, really. And, and, and I, taught you, <laughs> I taught you resilience yeah, or I or taught this. you to buck up and, yeah, and be yeah. a tougher person and that's got you where you are today. Terrible, terrible yeah. attitude yeah. And, and in fact that will never be rewarded. Yes. <laughs> your intention is rewarded only yeah. and your intention was to harm the child so that's what's going to be penalised yeah. in this case, yeah. that's all. So we need to make sure that people understand that yeah, <laughs> you, you can't choose to do a whole heap of bad things to a person in the hope of toughening them up yeah. uh, and then say, look what I did, isn't it great? Yeah. Type of thing, and expect to be rewarded by God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sadly, some kids reward their parents in that way. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. But they're taught to, obviously. Yeah. 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 So this is the, the ripple effect of the, for the penalties of passing. Obviously, the ripple effect does apply penalties to passing. And obviously, um, you can see the ripple effect occurring. And remember God's laws, when, when we say the words pass in, the ripple effect in terms of compensation is applied at the moment we made the sin in the yes. past because the God's laws can measure all of these potentials yeah. and then say, this is your potential. This is what you intended. This is what you desired. It this is what we're working on. This is what the law is working on your soul. <laughs> we want to work. To, it's actually loving provision, isn't it? Because we want God saying, I want to work to change this within you mm -hmm. even before the full effects of what you have acted on and attended have come into play. Correct. God want, God's working to help us be sensitive from the inception yeah. rather than waiting for, because often, sadly, people are not sensitive to that immediate application of compensation. Most often not, otherwise they wouldn't go ahead and do the, yes. usually we're not sensitive because if we were sensitive, we wouldn't go ahead and choose that intention yeah. in the first place. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but then uh, over time, people, the the full effects of what they've done become the full part effects of what they've done. Becomes apparent. Becomes more apparent. And then they start to feel some pain about it. Correct. Um, but God's not waiting for that. God's saying, no, no. from now I'm going to act as if all that's happened yeah. to help you see how, the gravity of what's happened. Correct. Either in a positive sense or a negative sense, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the joy of what happened as well, if it's positive. Yeah. So, so we need to understand that, that the beauty of the law of compensation is that it is correcting our intention and our desire right mm -hmm. from the moment or, of our intention or desire. Whether that intention or desire is loving or unloving, the law measures it and applies the, penal, the, the loving, the reward or the penalty for the mm -hmm. unloving behaviour. And we can't expect to have some kind of unloving behaviour and then be positively rewarded for it. No. <laughs> and we can't expect to have some kind of negative behaviour and to be, uh, you know, some kind of positive to change in our future as a result of it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, and, and, and there's, you can see the world playing out these sort of concepts a lot, you know, particularly when it comes to parenting. They say, well, yeah, sure, I belted you a lot, but look what it's done for you now. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, all these kind of, all these kind of justifications for past unloving behaviour, God does not evaluate whatsoever. No. In fact, all he does is examine the potentiality and the condition based upon your intention right now, mm. and the compensatory effects are implied right now. Mm. Mm. And this 
specificness, the specificity of the intention, the exactness of the intention and the flavor and all the elements of the intention, that's what's measured. Mm -hmm. um, because all of the other things are variable according to other laws, other people's will, all those other things. That's right. It's all very personal, and we've yeah. talked about that a lot through this series, haven't we? But it is interesting, isn't it, that the law can measure the potential mm -hmm. results as a result of your intention. Yeah. And and, and this is the amazing thing about the law, is it, is it just doesn't measure the results, it measures the potential results. Yes. And we need to understand that if we want to truly understand the law of compensation. Yeah. Mm.